Hello and welcome to Panzer Painting. Today we are going to paint this King Tiger that I have converted into a captured US Army King Tiger. Here you got a page of the different paints and materials that I have used for this project. We start by priming our tank with a dark grey color. You can also use a black or a white, but a dark color will help us hide the spots we might miss. If you like, you can also add some pre-highlights, just like I have done in some of my previous tutorials. Now that our priming is done, we can apply our first base color. I'm using the Dunkelgelb modulation set from Ammo by Mick. Start by using the darkest of the four colors, then give the entire tank a coat. Alternatively, you can also just paint the lower and the darkest parts of the tank. Now that the base coat is done, we can start our color modulation. This time we'll use the next color in the set by painting about 70% of the surface. But we're also going to paint the most noticeable parts such as the hatches and other extruding parts. Next we'll start highlighting. Aim for about 40% of the surface and just make sure to leave some of the other colors from the previous steps. For the final highlight, we'll use the last color of the set. With this, we can either add more interest to specific areas, or just use it as a general highlight to the entire tank. Either way, aim for about 10% and don't worry if it seems too stark. It will all settle down as we add more color and dirt to the tank. Now that we have finished our color modulation, we can continue with the next step. First we have to coat our tank with a satin varnish and when that has cured, we can add a worn effect medium to the entire tank. When the satin varnish and the worn effect medium has fully cured, we can start painting our camouflage. If you're using an airbrush, a pressure of 0.75 bars will be good. You'll also have to dilute your paint fairly much and then you have to get very close to your tank. It's a slow process, but it will allow you to get that fine line camouflage that we want. When everything is dry, we can start to scratch the camouflage paint with some water and a needle. Just rub the paint with a wet brush and eventually the paint will come off. You can also use a needle to get a line where a rock or a branch might have hit the tank. Thank you. 
in order to protect our tank so far, but more importantly, make it easier for us later, we will add a gloss varnish coat to the tank. I forgot to do it earlier, but the tank would have been primed red from the factory, so the parts where the fenders are gone should be painted red. Now it's time to add our decals. First, we'll soak the decals in some warm water for a few minutes, then we'll leave them on a piece of paper in order to get rid of any excess water. Then we'll apply the decal set to the wanted surface and then add the decal. Wipe off any excess decal set and then apply decal fix. This will soften the decal making it conform to the extrusions underneath. Now it's time to pinwash the tank. This will help us make some fake shadows while also enhancing the details a lot more. You could use enamel wash straight from the jar, but I find that it flows better if you mix it with some thinner first. Apply this to all the nooks and crannies. After about 20 to 30 minutes, the enamel wash is dry enough for us to remove the excess. You can use an old brush or a cotton bud for this job. Just dip it in some enamel thinner, wipe off most of the thinner in the piece of paper and then clean the tank. You can use an old brush in places you can't reach with the cotton bud, but please be careful, cause if you rub the same place too many times, you might ruin the paint job. We can now add some edge highlighting. Here we'll use a pointy brush that we can run along all the different edges. You can also use a flat brush and then dry brush all the edges. It's up to you really. But don't forget all the bows and handles and so on. The tracks also need some paint, so we'll use a dark grey color. I prefer German grey for this. We'll use the same color for all the metal parts, such as cables, tools and periscopes.
Next step is wear and tear. This is a two stage process and for this we'll use a piece of sponge or a brush. First we'll use a light yellowish color to symbolize the small scratches. Simply dab the sponge in the paint then remove most of the paint by dabbing it onto a piece of paper till it's more or less dry. Then dab it onto the areas that would see the most wear and tear from daily use and such. Repeat this process by using a dark color but not as heavy as before. If you are up for it, you can also use a fine brush to make lines along the hull and turret. A cool effect I saw in a magazine was the scratch lines from the rotating turret and on the fenders, so I wanted to try replicate that. The next couple of steps is about weathering. We start by using a dirt like oil color and we are gonna add this to where dirt would build up, which is on most of the surfaces. Then we will let it sit for a few minutes before working it. Use some enamel thinner and a brush and when you are happy, let it sit overnight in order for it to cure properly. Next up is some additional weathering. This time we are gonna use an enamel wash. Apply the enamel streaking and let it dry for about half an hour. Then blend it with an old brush and some enamel thinner. Let it dry for a few hours before continuing working with the model. Now it's time to paint the rest of the equipment, like the wooden parts and the jack.
I also wanted to make the exhaust look worn and rusty from all the heating. For this I used three red brownish colors and then chipped them onto the pipes. This might have been a lot easier if I wouldn't have attached them already. And to be honest I'm not too pleased with the result but it does the trick. A quick and easy step is the track wash. Just apply the track wash so that the track gets a bit of depth. It's now time to make our tank look like it has been driving around. So we'll add some earth pigment to the tracks but also to all the flat surfaces on the turret and on the deck. When that's done we can blend it with an old brush and then we can fix it with some pigment fixer. When it's dry we'll use the same pigment mixed with some thinner. Load an old brush and then flick it onto the tank with a toothpick. When it dries use some enamel thinner and a brush to blend some of the pigment. For the final touch we'll add some fuel stains and engine oil. Just add it near the fuel caps or where oil might be leaking. Let it dry and add some more if you like. You can thin this a bit if you want a softer appearance. The last step is very important, but also the one most people fear. It hasn't gone sour for me yet, but maybe that's a climate thing, I don't know. Just make sure to give the tank a few thin coats, letting it dry between each coat before adding a new one. This ultra matte varnish from uh, AK Interactive really goes really matte and I really like the look. Just take your time, because if you let it pool, it will leave grey stains. So that leaves us with a how to paint a king tiger. I decided I wanted to add this to my US army as a trophy and maybe I'll field it in a game one day, but who knows. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you can use it to paint your own Königstiger or king tiger or any other German cat for that matter. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more. I hope to see you again next time.